Hello, my name is Darren Cawthon, and tonight I'd like to go over what I consider to be a spec flow anti-pattern, and that is using private members to retain state between steps. Um, and here's my contact information if you wish to yell at me, because calling things anti-patterns can sometimes seem a little inflammatory, but hopefully after this you'll see what I mean. Um, I have a very simple site here that I'm going to, sh to use as a demo. It's just an MVC site and I have one feature in it right now called show homepage feature. And this is about as simple as it gets. When I visit the homepage then I should see the index view. And this is basically what I'm about to test. You know, it's just the default home controller. And I have some step definitions here. You can see the match. When I visit the home page, I have some definition for that. You can see I instantiate the controller and I pull the view result out. Then I should see the index view and I have a step definition that has a wild card. So I should see the anything view and I pass that in and I test that the view name should equal whatever I have here. Let's go ahead and run it just so you can see it'll pass. Okay, now since this is just an issue we have trying to you know map our language to code is we have to do it with methods and variables can't be I can't take a variable from here and then somehow get it here I have to you know give it to a higher scoped thing like the class so I've created a private member here view result which I set here and I test here. So it's a way for me to kind of carry the state from one method over to another method. And it works great. My test passes. Um, everybody's happy. At least they are now. Let's see what happens when I change things a little bit. I have another feature that I want to add to my application. It's pretty similar. It's just like a one-page controller. And it's when I visit the special offers page, then I should see the deals view. So let's build that and run this. Again, let's build that and run this. Thank you. Okay. Specflow um, very handily tells me what I need to define. And in this case, I need to define what it means when I say I visit the special offers page. So I'm going to tell Specflow how to get that. Now, you'll note the naming convention, I see this quite a bit too, is people will name their step file, or the step definitions file, um, the same as their feature. So let me just stick with that. I'm going to call this show a special offer steps. Now, what does that mean when I have when I visit the special offers page? It means that what is it? Special offers controller, I think. Yep. It means that essentially I'm going to new up my special offers controller, and I'm going to get the result. Um, in this case. I'm going to get the deals. Now I'm in a bind here. You note that, and I'll just run the test just to show it fail. When SpecFlow runs this, sorry, when it runs this line, I should see the deals view. It's going to look for a match, which is going to find here, and it's going to run this line. However, this view result is a private member in this class so it can't be used in this class. Now there's a number of ways to get around this. I've seen people, or actually here's here's the simplest way to get around this. Instead of making a separate file, I can just dump this guy in here. Run my tests and they're gonna pass. Okay. Um, however, I don't have to tell you that as you start adding more and more features, adding more and more steps to your application, 
trying to shove everything into one class just because you're trying to pass state around isn't going to work well. And I, I won't get into some of the other ways. I mean, I've seen people use static methods to carry the state through somehow. Um, basically, we're kind of in a bind here. At least we would be if we didn't have this solution. Specflow has something called a scenario context, which I can access through scenario context.current. Uh, the way to think about this is it's just an, a string object dictionary that you can use to pass values around. And we're going to use it to get us out of this bind. So I'm going to remove that private member variable. So things are going to start going red. So let's say I, I have view result. I'm going to say scenario context current set view result. Now set is just a generic method. Um, I, you know you could say I, I say that, but since it's I'm passing a view result, I don't have to set it as a generic too. Anyway, let's pop it back out. So I'll say var view result equals scenario context dot current dot get view result. What that's all this is going to do is it's going to pop the view result that I just set here out of the context. Actually, I shouldn't say pop; it just retrieves, um, and then it, it runs the test. And we'll do the same thing here. I'll need to spell that correctly. You can see it passes. And it doesn't matter, since I'm using scenario context, that the steps are in different files and different classes. I can basically pass values um, from anywhere using scenario context. Now there's one additional value I think that this gives you and that's in how you name your step definition files. Um, trying to keep steps lined up with the features doesn't really hold up. I found that a better way of doing that is to define your steps by uh, what they're associated to. So like in this case, that I'll go and keep this out. This guy is going to be used by many steps. I'm sorry, many features. It's already used by two. So I'm going to pull it out and tie it to a controller steps file. Because I'm kind of testing controller in a way here. So this is controller ish stuff. Um, and that frees me up to rename this to home controller steps. Yes. special offer controller steps my test will run because all I've done is rename files but you'll note that now I actually have um, a map essentially between my features and my project because all of the steps that are in my features all map to steps that are in classes here that are named similar to what they deal with. Like in this case, home controller. Here's here's a step that deals with home controller. So this gives you a way to build steps that tend to um, provide you a good mapping and, and in a way some documentation to show how your features map to your application. So anyway, I know this is a small example, uh, but as you add more and more things, I think it tends to scale up pretty well. Um, again, my name is Darren Cawthon. My email is darren at Uh Feel free to ask me any questions you have. Thank you. Bye-bye.